Now, one of the strengths of the Kalam is it's just so simple. Two premises and a conclusion. Whatever begins to exist has cause. The universe began to exist. Therefore, the universe has a cause. Is there an equally or closely similar kind of simple way of framing the cosmological argument uh, in your approach that you prefer, or is it just going to require more unpacking? Well, it's not done with uh, syllogistically that way. It's okay. uh, more of a scientific or philosophical approach the, using the method of multiple competing hypotheses. Got it. And you put on the table the, the key facts that have to be explained, and then you then you uh, posit the different, in this case, metaphysical hypotheses. They'd be different systems of thought, theism, deism, materialism, pantheism, panentheism, etc. And you put them all out there, and then you say, well, uh, based on the types of entities that each metaphysical system is positing and the attributes associated with them, which of those possible metaphysical hypotheses could provide a, an adequate causal explanation? And, and then, I, then I evaluate, you know, and I think theism is the best. Deism is mm -hmm. pretty close for the cosmological argument only. There's other kinds of evidences that I think d can help distinguish between theism and deism as, as to whether they're better explanations. I think pantheism, materialism fail, Panentheism is kind of a little bit of a hybrid thing to the extent that it's not pantheism, it's really theism, and it's to the extent that it's theism that it can provide yeah. an adequate explanation. To the extent that it, it affirms something, a transcendent causal entity separate mm -hmm. from the universe, then it does provide an adequate explanation. It's always a little unclear as to the extent to which panentheists are really affirming anything transcendent or not, but to the extent they are, then they may have something that can function as an adequate causal entity to explain the origin of the universe itself. I'm glad to hear you're not super clear on panentheism because I'm actually feel that way myself and try to grasp it. I have it. a so... couple of long footnotes about it because it is, <laughs> it depends on, are you talking about hearth shorn or, you know, it's, it's got right, different right. variants. Yeah. So I got a few last more popular level questions for you. Uh, one is I get asked this can a I, lot. Can I say one thing uh, sure. in favor of both, both these approaches? Uh, Go ahead. The deductive approach is clear, it's simple, and it has strong probabilistic force because each of the mm. premises are, are uh, defensible, um, but not with absolute certainty because, well, that's just the way it goes. Uh, they, if you have an inductive premise or an abductive premise like the universe had a beginning, well, we've got multiple lines of evidence pointing to that, but okay. it is an empirically derived premise. Now, Bill and I did a I did a podcast with him about this with Frank Turek recently. He wants to say that that you can establish that second premise that the universe had a beginning purely by physical or by, by logical and metaphysical arguments uh, 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 against um, uh, uh, challenging the the plausibility of actual infinites. And I think I'm probably sympathetic to that, but my brain hurts too much when I try to think about that actual <laughs> infinite problem. So he's probably right. Okay. But I, it's just not the way I've typically Fair I enough. came out of a science and philosophy of science background and less analytical philosophy, but I, I it's probably a good, good approach. Uh, I think I got to know him and know JP on the phone when I was a young professor, when mm -hmm. I was teaching some of those things and I had to call them both up and get them to explain That's it cool. to me again, you know, anyway, um, the inference to the best explanation approach has, uh, it's not quite as simple to explain because you have to look at all the different hypotheses, but you end up having to do that anyway because your alternative hypotheses and in an inference to the best explanation gotcha. approach end up being your objections yep. or, or related to the objections in your deductive approach. So the two things end up being kind of interconvertible logically. And I just like laying out, well, what are the different options, explanatory okay. options, and weighing the pros and cons. And the, as far as the, a practical matter, I think that approach has the virtue of being the way we actually reason in real life. You know, whether right. we're detectives or, you know, looking at stuff around the house, trying to figure out, you know, if my wife <laughs> figures out that I was home because there was a bunch of muddy footprints and sticky fingerprints and you know, reasoning from effects hmm. back to causes is something we do quite commonly in science, in in detective work, in ordinary life. And I think the great metaphysical detective story uh, can also be adjudicated using that same 
abductive reasoning from effects back to causes, weighing competing mm. causal explanations, evaluating which one is best, and then affirming the one that is most causally adequate as our preferred hypothesis, given what we know at this point. So it doesn't make the same claim to degrees of certainty, but I think it is rooted in a practical form of reasoning that a lot of people find very persuasive. We are very consistent in applying that to the origin of life and DNA, applying that to fine tuning. I think if I'm not mistaken, even different archeological accounts, I've seen you apply a similar kind of reasoning there as well. So that makes sense. Uh, that's great, super helpful. Final question for you is I've heard some people say, well, the cosmological argument doesn't get us all the way to the Christian God anyways. At best, it's compatible with Judaism and Islam, and you said it earlier, maybe even some kind of deistic God. So what's the value? And uh, how significant can it be? Um, I'm, I'm interested in the word anyways. Um, it, it sort of says, well, then does it really matter? Who cares, mm -hmm. right? Um, well, it doesn't do all those things. I've been quick to acknowledge that. But it, I think, provides strong grounds for extricating oneself from a materialistic or strictly pantheistic worldview or um, I think it provides a reason to believe in God without providing a proof of a particular uh, theistic or deistic conception of the creator. Um, and I think it's the first step possibly in a, uh, a metaphysical investigation that might then lead to mm -hmm. questions about, well, what is, does a deistic God or a theistic God provide a better overall explanation for the evidence that we see in the natural world? That's a question I address in my most recent book, uh, return of the God hypothesis. I think the biological evidence um, is something that is better explained by a theistic notion of a creator who is active in the creation after the beginning than a deistic notion of the creator who or which by definition limits its activity to the beginning of the universe. Um, so I think as you, what I do in the return of the God hypothesis is look at an ensemble of key evidences about biological, physical, and cosmological origins, mm -hmm. and argue that of the competing metaphysical hypotheses on offer, things like theism, deism, pantheism, panentheism, uh, panspermia, the space alien designer hypothesis, uh, that of those candidates, theism provides the best overall explanation. And by best, I mean the best causally adequate explanation. Mm. And this was a shorter answer to your earlier question about God of the gaps. And because I provide uh, uh, reasons for for assigning certain causal powers to God as an entity who might act. In other, word, in other words, because there are reasons for thinking that God might possess certain causal powers, then it becomes possible to generate empirical expectations and also invoke God as an explanation that is motivated by our knowledge or understanding or theoretical thinking about cause and effect in a way that means that the God hypothesis is not an argument from ignorance. Hmm. We're providing a positive reason for affirming it as an explanation, not just saying, well, X can't do it, therefore God must have. Hmm. 